primarily from George Virtual. They're going to talk to you about what they are doing. And the presentation uh, is going to be by Jay Heap and Tammy Eckard from Georgia Virtual. And we'll get to them in about 10 minutes, because Roy and I are going to speak uh, very briefly about uh, what we're doing. So let me start there. And uh, actually, that's not the slide I wanted to start at. Let me start on this slide. And just to know, and I've showed this before, but let me um, do it again, that um, this is the, the panel. Now, you may want to minimize your panel by clicking here. And if you have comments and questions, you put it here, and we will respond here. What I'll probably do, because Roy and I will both be monitoring the Q&A, we may respond to you um, through the Q&A, but we are also likely to save many of the questions for the question period, which, we'll, which we will get to later. So that's, that's the situation we're in. Your phones are muted, because we have so many people <laughs> on this call, 150 people registered. And so we are going to um, keep um, the lines muted. And uh, we may open a, a particular line if we need a clarification on the question. But that's where we're, that's what we'll be doing. So let me talk a little bit and give you a couple slides about uh, soft chalk and, and, our, and, our, and our base here. Um, Soft Chalk is embarking on our 10th anniversary, or in 2012 will be 10 years old, and you know, that's ancient in cyber years. And in each of those years, we've listened to our clients and made important improvements, added features, and actually additional tool sets. We started as a kind of a WYSIWYG type editing authoring tool in 2002, and we've enriched that with several companion products. And so as a result, we've you know, got an impressive client base of uh, clients in 1,200 institutions across the globe, and a flow of really excellent awards over time. And our product suite does a lot, and we're, you know, I'm, this is Chalk, we are on Chalk, Soft, Soft Chalk 7 and Connect Plus as part of our client, and part of our suite. And we do all these things. We clean, we share, we do a lot that makes it easy for you to create a very, well, we do amazingly complex work through these various areas. Now, the tool that you're going to see today is the Soft Chalk authoring tool. And we create, deliver, and track with that. And I'm going to spend just a few moments uh, doing that. Um, it's it's, I'm sure, the easiest way you will find for you and your institution to create e-learning content. Learners you know, only need a browser, and that enables students to access from desktops, laptops, mobile devices, electronic whiteboards. And you can bring it and use it on virtually any learning management system as well. And about 80% of our clients use a learning management system. So, and what could be better? You know, we have learning activities and quizzes that reinforce learning. And then from there, you're able to track the information through either a um, the learning management system gradebook or using our own score center. And I'm just going to very briefly talk about the fact that we are now able to track the scores, the grades that folks are using, the students are using in, um, in the activities. And you'll see some um, as we go through um, from Georgia Virtual. They'll talk to you about some of the scores and some of the graded activities. So we can use that. And you can use our score center in a variety of environments. And we also use it, uh, can import it into virtually any of those learning management systems that I created. And then there's Soft Chalk Connect. And Soft Chalk Connect and Connect Plus is a way that we have of having the content you create be shared by others. We can host the content. I mean, why would you want to create content and share it? Well, that's because you 
are going to be able to also use it. So soft chalk is our soft chalk community. It creates a shareable learning object repository, and you can share and collaborate with others. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I want at this point to turn it over to Roy, and he'll give you a very brief conversation about um, Reed Speaker. So Roy, take it over. Hello, everybody. Let me just put this full screen. Um, so uh, Reed Speaker. Um, Reed Speaker brings you the voice. Um, we um, invented the concept of using text-to-speech to speech-enable speech online content on websites, uh, mobile websites, uh, learning management uh, content systems, um, uh, mobile applications. And so that's really um, our, our core focus. <coughs> We're a market leader in, on this space, uh, and we have a, a presence uh, worldwide. Uh, we are now active in, in 32 countries, uh, so um, a lot of our business is done in Europe as well as in, in North America, uh, also in uh, Arab countries, in uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and, and Japan. <coughs> um, speech enabling online content uh, responds to different needs. Uh, this can be for uh, accessibility, uh, an accessibility area uh, for uh, users who have different types of um, reading handicaps. Um, could be people who are visually impaired, for example. Or Roy, I've had a comment that your volume is very low. People are having a little trouble hearing you. Could you bring it up a bit? Sure. Is that better? Much better. OK. <clears throat> so um, where you know, we have uh, uh, people with different needs coming from the accessibility area, um, also a comfort uh, where you can listen to uh, online content wherever you happen to be at any time. And more specific to this webinar in the learning space, uh, educational uh, e-learning space, for uh, helping uh, online users have a better access to, to uh, courses. So learners, different types of learners who benefit from online text-to-speech uh, range from um, users with cognitive impairments to poor readers, uh, to people who have dyslexia, uh, to people who are uh, visually impaired, to people who are learning uh, English as a second language or English language learners, as well as people who are multitasking who are uh, accessing online content on their uh, mobile devices or by modal learners. There are several benefits for educational content owners to add online text-to-speech. Um, well, first of all, it transforms the experience by allowing uh, users to, to listen to the content, and it leverages your existing uh, assets, courses, in, in, a, in new ways. Um, by adding online text-to-speech, you're also uh, providing your courses to a bigger part of the population. The different users I mentioned account for uh, you know 20 percent in, in most of, of the countries that we uh, are active in. Uh, it, it, as I said, it increases the accessibility of your online courses, and it also increases student retention and comprehension and memory via the du dual mode delivery of the content we provide. You will see that with the Georgia Virtual School uh, demo where uh, the text is both highlighted while it is read. Uh, ReadSpeaker is a really um, easy um, uh, module to implement. Uh, we are a, a totally cloud-based solution. Um, we're a very cost-effective solution as well. And very important for all our uh, end users, uh, it's basically just a click and listen. There are no downloads required. And finally, this is really a universal design uh, because this works across all different types of browsers, uh, operating systems, and uh, we are available in uh, 35 languages and over 70 voices. So we really have a very wide coverage here. So um, read speaker in some points. So we are we speech enable different types of online content, whether it's on websites or learning management systems or mobile apps uh, on demand. 
we're a software as a service, uh, so we host the service. Uh, as I said, we have an extensive coverage in terms of languages and voices. We are uh, very easy to install and use. Uh, we were founded in 1999 in Sweden. Uh, we are present in uh, 35 countries and we have more than 5,000 customers worldwide. Uh, how do we deliver the service? Well, it's a web-based service uh, hosted in the cloud. There's no redevelopment of the website or mobile app which is required. It's uh, basically uh, adding our JavaScript or programming library and uh, defining the content on the website and mobile app you want to have read. And there, uh, thereafter, your online educational content is talking. Um, the solution you will see on Georgia Virtual School is, is the ReadSpeaker Enterprise highlighting solution. So it's um, a solution which both uh, reads out the, the content and highlights it at, at, at the same time. So that provides for a better understanding of the content. And um, again, with, as with all our solutions, no downloads are required for the end user. It's just a click and listen behavior. So this is what you will see on the Georgia Virtual School, the embedded highlighting product, uh, where you see both highlighting uh, of the words and sentences. Uh, this is uh, an example of also on mobile applications. For those of you that have uh, courses on mobile applications, we can also provide a, a, an API to speech-enable uh, mobile apps on iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry. We also do speech enabling, enabling the online PDFs, uh, so that's another way to add speech to your course content, uh, and this can be for PDFs, uh, Word, OpenOffice, RTF. Here, uh, finally, is the last slide on my side. We have the, um, quite a range of different types of, of customers in the educational space, uh, being schools, publishers, um, and uh, obviously uh, in this webinar, uh, Soft Chalk and the Georgia uh, Virtual School. So over to you, Steve. Okay, great. Let me just turn it over to uh, Tammy and Jay, and we'll give you the, the show. You've got it. Tammy, you should be seeing questions saying, uh, do you want to show my screen? There you go. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jay Heap. I am the Associate Director of um, Operations for the Georgia Virtual School, and I'm here with Tammy Eckerd, our Manager of Instructional Development. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on Georgia Virtual School, uh, how we started, um, so that you would understand it. I, I saw in the survey that most participants are higher ed, so I wanted to make sure that it, Everybody kind of understood what, what it is that we do and the, the clients that we serve. Um, we were established in 2005 by then Governor Sonny Perdue to provide equity for AP students in rural areas who couldn't get access to the classes. Uh, since then, um, we have extend, expanded our uh, AP offerings to over 20 courses, but we also offer regular education, elective courses, and more language courses. Uh, for a total of over 120 um, Carnegie unit courses uh, in, the, in the grades of 9 through 12. We are uh, SACS and NCAA accredited uh, in our, both our program and our courses, uh, and we're serving over 5,200 enrollments this semester. We also have a middle school program that operates in the summers only that uh, does math, science, and, and language arts for grades 6, 7, and 8. Uh, next, I want to talk about a little bit about how we got started with Soft Chalk and uh, kind of what our relationship was with those. Uh, we, with them, we started uh, in a development process many years ago um, with our teachers creating material within our learning management system. We found that um, we needed a better solution a solution that would make our material uh, more consistent across all courses and developers. We found that we needed to have a solution that was uh, more easily navigable by uh, the users. And so we started with SoftTalk about four years ago, and I believe we started with uh, SoftTalk version four or five um, and have grown along with SoftTalk. 
Uh, we currently have uh, 60 core, over 60 courses in the SoftTalk format. We are moving our courses from our LMS format to SoftTalk. Uh, one of the reasons that we, we really like SoftTalk is because we can create SCORM packages that are LMS agnostic. So it, it doesn't matter which LMS you're using, uh, SoftTalk works well uh, in, in everything that we've seen. So we can actually move our packages around and help accommodate our school districts who might want to use some of our content by giving them the SoftTalk package for the course. And whether they're using a network, uh, a different LMS, it doesn't make any difference. Everything plays and works just fine. Uh, and the, the new mobile format that came out with version 7 has been very helpful to us to deliver uh, content to students. Um, through surveys, we find that more and more of our students are using smartphones. And so uh, the soft top material uh, plays real well uh, on the smartphones and has really been a good a key to uh, students accessing that material outside of the classroom. If you want to see more examples of what we are going to show you today, you can certainly go to our georgiavirtuallearning.org site uh, and click on the resources tab and we actually have close to 20 full course content classes uh, available for you to see. So you can see various examples of how uh, we provide material through SoftChalk for our students. Uh, as far as ReadSpeaker goes, we uh, met them at one of our learning management system user conferences in June. And we spoke with them about uh, the idea of having the text read to the students. And at that time, they had an integration with our learning management system. But because we didn't create any content inside of our learning management system, all of our material is stored outside of that. Um, the solution uh, didn't work well for us. So uh, we talked with uh, Tim Loveless regarding how can we get this to work in an environment that where our students will need it. We found uh, the benefits that Roy talked about, not only for our students who have special needs, but also uh, every student who participates in the course can benefit from having the material uh, read to them especially if it's highlighted along the way. It can certainly help with both understanding, maybe the speed at which they can uh, go through the material, and certainly with some uh, familiar, unfamiliar terms uh, that they might not be uh, used to. So uh, we, we talked with ReadSpeaker. Uh, they provided uh, us some code that could be used in SoftChalk, uh, and we found that that was a workable thing, but then they decide to work with SoftTalk to get a direct integration. So instead of us having to really do anything with code inside of SoftTalk, uh, SoftTalk and ReadSpeaker were able to work together uh, to implement this program right inside the SoftTalk software. Uh, and Tammy, who, uh, who I'm going to turn this over to here in just a second, is going to show you different examples of, of what our courses look like. and how we use both uh, many of the soft chalk activities and components and how uh, we have implemented ReadSpeaker into those. And then at the end, she'll actually show you how easy it is to implement ReadSpeaker into your uh, soft chalk license. So, Tammy? All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I am going to uh, demonstrate ReadSpeaker and some other things with a little compilation of some pages from some various soft chalk packages that we've put together. So this is just a little, like I said, compilation of those. So here we have um, our introduction to AP government and politics, and most of our courses have the same home page, this beginning page, with the same general information. And you can see we have some essential questions. We've started implementing what we call a module minute, and ReadSpeaker is great because right now we've had to record this module minute so that the students could download and, and hear it later, and now we can avoid that because now we can have ReadSpeaker read that for us. 
So they include key terms and some information on what to expect in the upcoming module. So this is a typical home page, and I'm going to show you how great ReadSpeaker reads this page. You notice that we have a little icon right here. This is the ReadSpeaker icon. Simply says in. This can be placed either at the top of the page or in the sidebar, and we're actually going to be moving it to the sidebar. That was a recent upgrade, I think yesterday. We had some text issues because the sidebar text was blue on our blue sidebar, but now it pulls from the template, so that has been solved. So I'm going to let this go ahead and play for a second. You can see how easy this is. Virtual school logo. Introduction to AP government and politics comparative. World flags. Politics is all around us. In its basic definition, politics is the struggle in any group for power that will give one or more persons the ability to make decisions for the larger group. Politics affect small organizations, such as Boy Scout troops, workplace offices and corporations, local communities, states, countries, and even to some degree the entire global population. So it's just simple to stop and start. So that is how ReadSpeaker works and what it sounds like. And it does a fabulous job reading all of this text. This next page is a page from our food and nutrition class. And again, icon appears on each page. One of the things that our Georgia Virtual School developers do is create um, icons such as this with an image that has some text because this is much more appealing especially to a high school student than just simple text on a page so our developer put these three key points on an image and the problem was this was just reading but you can simply um, let me highlight the image if I highlight the image you notice a new icon pops up right here I can click here and it will actually listen to the selected text and I'm going to tell you how we did this Below. 1. Toppings. Eliminate items you generally add out of habit or for appearances, such as frosting, coconut or whipped cream toppings, which are all high in fat and calories. So it will read the image. If you take the text that appears on the image and add it via soft chalk to the alt tag, then it will read what's in the alt tag. And so this was a simple way for us to solve that problem of it not reading the text by adding it to the alt tag. So it does a great job of that. This is another image that's made in this course that looks fantastic. I didn't actually retype all of this information in there, but you can put some brief information so that it will read. On this next page, this is from our risk management and insurance course. And I'm going to show you on the, the listen page, if I click on listen, I'm going to pause this before we get going, there's a settings icon. And we can click here, and it shows you the different um, options you have with ReadSpeaker. And right now, ours is set to do the word and sentence highlighting, which you saw. You can change that. Any user can change that to be simply the sentence or the word only or take off the highlighting altogether. The pop-up button is the highlighting and the pop-up button that comes up on the side, so you can either show or hide that. And this is a great feature. You can actually change the speed. So previously it was at medium. I'm going to go ahead and move it to fast so you can see the difference in that speed. And I'm going to come down here and have it read uh, this paragraph right here. And again, here's my pop-up. Homeowner, landlord, tenant. All are at risk for loss and all can be protected from financial loss with proper insurance. For more information on these policies, review the Homeowner's Guide Georgia on the sidebar. If you are planning on going away for college, you will also want to take a look at the Georgia Renters Insurance article, also on the sidebar. So I can highlight and read that text. Here we've included, we, we use many of the inline activities activities that are provided by soft chalk and here's one such activity and this is a matching activity and I'm going to show you if I highlight the activity and again get my pop-up you can hear how this reads this activity question one match the items the task is to match the lettered items with the correct numbered items appearing below is a list of lettered items following that is a list of numbered items each numbered item is followed by a drop-down. 
Select the letter in the drop-down that best matches the numbered item with the lettered alternatives. A. Damage to personal property within a rental dwelling is the responsibility of the And the great thing about this activity, the matching activities, have those directions embedded in the HTML code. So the read speaker pulls those instructions and reads them beautifully. Now I will warn you, we're working with read speaker and they're helping us with some of the other activities to make sure that they read just as well as this matching activity does. I'm going to move on to a page from, I believe, one of our history courses. I believe this was from um, our AP European History course. And down here we have another of the self-check uh, assessments. And this is just a fill-in-the-blank question. But again, we can go ahead and highlight and read. Analyze this question from the 2008 AP European exam. How many tasks must you complete? Analyze the ways in which the events of the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic period, 1789-1815, led people to challenge Enlightenment views of society, politics, and human nature. And you can see how well it read Napoleonic. I'm not sure I knew how to pronounce that. I'm a math teacher, so <laughs> so Read Speaker does a great job with with reading even those more difficult text. So. Let me just show you in SoftChalk. Here's just a SoftChalk pulled up in the SoftChalk program. And to implement the Read Speaker, we just simply go to Tools, and we've got the Read Speaker from our drop down menu. And here, Read Speaker provided us with a customer ID and the publishing domain, which is our desire to learn. Um, that's our management, learning management system. And the JavaScript information, you enter that all one time. And then you have the choice, like I said, to put it in the sidebar or the top of the page. And you can check to enable, or if you uncheck it, it will take that um, read speaker icon out of the soft chalk package when you load it. So it's very, very simple to implement and then to add or um, subtract from your, your website. So it, it's been great, and even today, we just added this to our student orientation course, and that will be new to the students coming the spring semester, and one of our support team members asked when it was going to be implemented in all of our courses, and it's going to take us some time because we're migrating from one area to another, but she's thrilled with the fact that they can introduce this to the schools, that the students will have the opportunity to have that text read to them. So we are excited about that. And that is really all that I have. Jay, did you have anything more you wanted to share? Uh, no, I, I think you did a great job. And if there are um, some questions, we're, we're finished with our, our part. Well, there are a lot of questions, so maybe it's time we uh, get started on those. And, and let me get started with, um, Nathan, let's get this out of the way. You gave a link to where the demos are on your site, and somebody, and they asked for you to display that again, so maybe while we're talking, if you can find that slide, um, you can put it back up so people can copy that down. Um, and uh, use it. you find it soon enough. There you go. Okay, the, the question I think... Roy, really quickly, while that's coming up, or yeah. let me just tell you, this, the georgiavirtuallearning.org has resources. Those are our soft chalk courses that are in a shared format. We have not enabled Read Speaker on those courses. That's part of our migration, and it will eventually get there, but I just wanted people to know that the Read Speaker is not enabled on those yet. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I think, the, I think there's a, a kind of an overriding question that has been asked in different ways about accessibility. So I'd like uh, either Roy or um, uh, someone from Georgia Virtual to talk about accessibility versus diversity and how you are using ReadSpeaker and how they kind of connect. Because people are asking a lot about accessibility. And I, 
I said basically a lot of this is about diversity, but I think maybe you'd want to address that question. Okay, I'll, I'll take that to, to start with, and Roy may have some more information. To be honest with you, like I said, our, our relationship with SoftChart uh, and ReadSpeaker predominantly just started in June. And in the past, we have had a special needs students who um, would who are using uh, screen readers um, or very uh, various others accessibility various other accessibility tools to participate in our class and we we do the best that we can uh, to accommodate each and every one of those students uh, we did not have that many of them um, and it, as a whole uh, we weren't terribly experienced with all of the tools that students have a student needs with accessibility so when we saw this product we we first of all thought of all of our uh, of our special needs students and some of the implementations that we were trying to make but were struggling with and we thought wow this is a great opportunity to provide those students uh, with, with an accessibility tool. As we continue to look at it, we thought, wow, better than just making it available just for our special needs students, what a benefit this is for all students. Students who are, as Roy said, multitaskers, students who are um, uh, bimodal learners. And then also, the students who have a lot of the difficulties with with reading, whether they're not reading at the proper level, whether they are dyslexic or have other reading concerns, that is where we really see the benefit. And like Tammy said, we we're beginning the process of implementing this into the classes. Um, the first place that students will see it is in our orientation class, and we're working to get as many of the, the new uh, our new courses created and our old courses modified, so that soft talk will be available to more and more of our students as we go. That process, because we've got to, uh, as you saw, the the process of, of turning reach speaker on and off is very simple, but you have to take that soft talk package, open it and turn it back on, uh, resave it, and put it back where it needs to go. So we're in the process of having to do that. Um, so Roy, you may have some additional comments on, on how ReadSpeaker really helps the accessibility. Yeah, Jay, I, I, well, I think you, you've covered a lot of, of, the, of the points here. Um, we really see ReadSpeaker as a, um, you know, a web service which is uh, in basically uh, the usability and accessibility uh, context. Um, it uh, it helps uh, a lot of users who uh, who don't have screen readers uh, because you know screen readers can be uh, can be expensive. Uh, it helps a whole you know um, part of the population that has different types of reading problems uh, get access to uh, to. Uh, you know, website content and, and, and educational content in this particular context, in a very easy uh, fashion uh, by just you know clicking and listening. So our solution has really been um, developed in a way to uh, overcome as many barriers as possible, uh, so as to be used by as many po uh, uh, users as possible. Um, so. We are definitely in the accessibility uh, arena, but our, our vision here is to provide content owners uh, the um, uh, the implementation of our service in uh, in a customized way, so that it really fits to their needs and to the needs of their of their users. And um, we also, uh, you know, care a lot about you know usability, universal design, um, so as to make the use of our service um, as you know as easy uh, and as uh, and as quick as possible for for all. Uh, I think you you saw with the, the Georgia Virtual School uh, pages that um, the uh, conversion from the text to speech 
is almost instantaneous. Um, and so uh, that's a really uh, important part of our, of our, uh, you know, what we deliver is uh, easiness of use, uh, rapidity of, uh, of delivery, and uh, and thereby uh, with also the, you know, the highlighting uh, of the uh, text that's being read out, um, a service which we hope is is, is helpful and useful uh, for as many users as possible, uh, including users uh, which do not suffer from any specific uh, you know uh, reading problem but uh, uh, who happen to be in a, in a, mo a mobile environment commuting etc uh, helping them you know access courses from wherever they are and whenever they want to hello I turn my mic off and I keep talking um, we have a whole series of questions that I not quite sure how to to frame. There's questions about um, Flash and how we work independently and together with that, um, and 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 the conversation about accessibility versus diversity and what read speaker, how read speaker handles some things. Soft chalk in this, I mean, Flash items are just not generally accessible. What soft chalk does is it creates alternate ways of displaying the information so that there's a, a, an international standard of a keyhole which the uh, which a screen reader would recognize and you would click on it and it would read the alternate information to provide in the um, uh, for the screen reader uh, to read and and as you create your activity easy information to do as well. The other thing is that we are working together with ReadSpeaker to see if, there you go, she's showing that now, excellent. And we are working with ReadSpeaker so that they can automatically read that information as well. I don't know that is actually accomplished at this point. Uh, you may want to address address that, but we are working in that direction. Remember, this relationship between ReadSpeaker and SoftChalk is just only about a month old. So we have done a lot in a short period of time, sort of wanted it to be a holiday present to all of you. We get this up and running and working. So we're still uh, working on getting all the details to work. Um, do you want to address what is working now? Hello. Yeah, yeah. To whom are you addressing that question? Oh, whoever wants to, whoever wants to pick it up. <laughs> Jay, Roy. Sorry, I didn't, I couldn't quite hear the, the the question you were asking. Oh, the question uh, had to do with 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 whether or not Read Speaker is reading flash alternate information. Yes. Oh, well, sure. we have it's 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 it, this is a I don't want to get into a too technical um, uh, answer here, but there are ways for us to um, speech enable accessible flash, or if there is a uh, you know a text file behind the flash that we can have access to, uh, because the um, let's say the um, condition for read speaker work is to um, find a way to access the text um, behind the flash and in that case uh, we can speech enable it right so that that's in the works um, there are others um, questions I think Roy and I we you and I probably should should address this there's a lot of questions about licensing and um, just to sort of be brief you will require a soft chalk license as well as a read speaker license. And if you, you can contact either of us and we will send the information to the other. So if you're a read speaker client, we will give you information. Okay. At the very last slide, I'm going to give you contact information for all of us. So if you want any information about the work Georgia Virtual is doing, you have that contact information. If you want information about um, more information about Read speaker, you'll get that information, um, and soft chalk, you'll get that information as well. So, but you will require a special license, and somebody asked whether or not you um, 
how it works on, on, on websites and Roy, I don't you may want to address that again because yeah. we think it yeah. just doesn't automatically work. You need to work with you on making that work. Yeah, it's uh, if you want to use Read Speaker on uh, on any website, you just need to contact us, and um, uh, we then deliver to you uh, a, a JavaScript and, and a piece of HTML code. And uh, normally, in a, in a, you know, in under two to three hours, your website is is speech enabled. Uh, so I always compare this to adding uh, you know a tracking code like Google Analytics uh, to your website. Well, it's the same. It's the same reasoning with Read Speaker. You add our script and you add our, our HTML snippet, and then you have a talking website. And uh, you can certainly contact us so that we can, you know, uh, give you more information and then and send you demos. We we do demos on a specific page of a, of a website if you want to see how this works on your own website. And this question just came up from Dale asking how many websites we can do that with. Is it unlimited? And I think Roy. We, you know, we have um, we have different pricing schemes in terms of uh, uh, number of domains uh, you want to speech enable. So uh, you basically, you know, it's unlimited. We can, you know, speech enable as many websites as as we want. We have a extremely high uh, server uh, capacity. We, uh, you know, we speech en speech enable more than five thousand customers worldwide. Some of these have extremely high traffic. Uh, so we're we're totally fine and equipped to handle uh, heavy usage. So um, uh, you know we can speech enable, uh, I would say, an unlimited number of websites. Um, and so just you know get back to us if you have a specific uh, you know a situation in mind and in terms of number of websites you you would want to use our service on. One of the questions that 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 is related to that, and I think we'll answer another question is. Um, Soft Chalk Connect, which I mentioned during my presentation, it's a, a digital learning object repository, and then you can publish all kinds of Soft Chalk content to it, from individual activities and quizzes to entire lessons or courses you create in Soft Chalk. Um, somebody asked if they could see a course that was, uh, or lessons that was Read Speaker enabled, and uh, we should put that. We should put a few of those out on Soft Chalk Connect if it's not already out there. Uh, Jay, Tammy, have you put anything out there? I know that we can if you haven't. Uh, no, oh, we don't have anything up. Go ahead. I was just going to say we use the Learning Object Repository inside D2L, so that's where our information is housed. So we don't have anything out on Soft Chalk Connect right now. Um, however, if you can get to, if you have a soft chalk license and you click on the Read Speaker tool, there is a Read Speaker example here and a link to an example that works and a Read Speaker website right there, so you can see that example. Excellent, excellent. That's a good, that's a good point, and I will um, start publishing some Read Speaker content in Soft Chalk Connect as well, so uh, people will be able to see that. There as well. So yes, we'll have plenty of places for them to see it, see um, suggestions. As a matter of fact, maybe after the session, you and I should talk and see and talk about some good content to put out there. Perhaps the sample lessons you were taught, you would give them today. So okay. Um, and um, so th there's a question here, Roy, that there's something in the in the Read speaker website indicated that you can accommodate only five concurrent users, and the University of West Florida has seven thousand students. Yeah, yeah. I would just answer to that. Um, that that the Read speaker web reader is a specific product we have, which is mostly for personal blogs, personal websites. Uh, that's uh, another um, another area we cater to. So. Um, uh, our our main you know company site it's readspeaker.com and uh, that's where uh, you would uh, you would contact us there and uh, we will get back to you with a uh, you know a specific uh, uh, product which will uh, you know be able to cater to your needs. Um, so again, Re readspeaker web reader is a very specific product for personal blogs, personal websites. Um, um, our main site is it's readspeaker.com, and uh, we have a contact form there. 
Um, so you know, feel free to, to get back to us, and, and we'll get back to you very quickly, uh, and, and you know, and look at the, the best solution for you. Uh, there's a question about mathematical equations, and as I understand it, that it's part of the work in progress that we are working on. Has that been? I mean, so much is getting solved so quickly. I thought I'd just throw that out as we were working on that when we talked on Monday. That's work in progress. Uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, launched uh, a few uh, a few weeks ago uh, the ability to read uh, MathML, uh, so we can read. Read speaker can read um, uh, math expressions, including quite complicated math expressions. Um, that that's something we are now uh, uh, working on specifically with uh, with you at Soft Chalk, Steve. Uh, but uh, overall. Um, uh, that is a, a part of our, our service, is to read uh, uh, both regular and complicated math expressions. Right. Now, at the end of this session, you're going to be asked if you want more information about ReadSpeaker or SoftChalk, and um, we will send that information on to both organizations, so they will get back to you. As a matter of fact, we got a comment from Dale that we should let the folks know that ReadSpeaker does get back to you very quickly after you ask for more for information about them. So that is, um, that, is, that is good to know, and we will get back to you as well. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take the screen back, and I'm going to show my screen, and that will have all the access information that uh, I talked about. So there we all are. So that, in, that information will be sent to you in a follow-up email. That follow-up email will include all that access information, so you can get hold of us if you want to know more. Um, there will be a survey right after you leave this webinar that will ask you if you want more information. That's another way. But if you want to contact us, because you don't want to wait a day or two till we get back to you, that's information you can, you can take and get back to us uh, right away. Um, let's see. We got <laughs> Dale's comments are really nice. Jay, he says, uh, her, Dale's grandchildren use Georgia Virtual School for homeschooling. So Yay! A lot going on out there. Um, there's a lot of information asking about licensing information and cost, and I don't think we're going to really want to handle this online. Um, I know that um, uh, Tim, uh, Lovelace from ReadSpeaker has joined us. I don't know whether you want to talk uh, at this point about licensing costs, so we'd rather do that on an individual basis as we get back to people on and get that. Yeah, Tim, yeah, yeah I, I think it's probably better that we, we, we handle that on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, right now we're, we're generally basing it on uh, FTE, or Carnegie units, depending on how your school is uh, set up. Uh, but uh, please send uh, my email address is the second one beneath Roy's Tim Lovelace at readspeaker.com, and uh, then we can just a, a rough estimation of your FTE or Carnegie units. Uh, then we can create pricing for you, and after that, it it, it flows pretty smoothly, it's, uh, which is one of the things that we were really glad of working with Softshot again about how easy the uh, implementation is. A um, couple of questions are coming up that I think we will try to uh, to get answered before we go. Most of them are about Read Speaker, and it's it's an online environment. Can it read Word documents or other file types? That was asked by Sue. Do you, uh, Roy? Yeah, the the, the documents uh, are uh, are online, um, so um, you know we can read you know pdf documents open office word uh, rtf uh, uh, online um, now one thing that um, uh, we didn't uh, read uh, look into see here is that uh, users can always um, uh, download an mp3 uh, version of uh, you know the web page or the online pdf that they are uh, listening to they can always uh, download the mp3 uh, onto their uh, onto their computer or onto another uh, device to listen uh, to at, at a later stage. So um, 
there is that uh, I was offline component to it, but it's online um, online um, uh, speech enabling of content. Right, and if you are using Soft Chalk, Soft Chalk has a tool we call an iframe tool, which allows you to put inside a Soft Chalk lesson all kinds of content, other web pages, a Word document, a PDF document, and from there, read speakers should be able to just read it from there. So one of the one way is one way of getting your other kind of content online would be to take soft chalk and embed that information inside so that read speakers can get the access online to it from from there. And uh, another question from Judith is can read speaker read embedded RSS feeds in a website or other third party yeah. content? Yeah, we we have a, we have also a specific solution for uh, for RSS feeds, uh, Read Speaker Podcaster. So with Read Speaker Podcaster, we convert um, RSS feeds into podcasts. Um, so that is uh, that is totally doable, and uh, that's something we we provide. Okay, a question came up to clarify from uh, Doralli. I hope I pronounced that name right. Um, and I think you showed that, Tammy, about how you can get access to the read speaker sample. And they're asking whether or not you actually need to have a, a read speaker soft chalk license. And I think you just uh, go to go to soft chalk and you enable the read speaker piece, or you try to enable it. And if you don't have a license, you'll still have that page in which you can go to the demo. Was it? And do I uh, recall that right? Yes, that's correct. If you have a soft chalk license, you can get right to it from the tools menu. Yeah, even if you don't have a read speaker license, you'll be able to see this, the sample. So, yes, yes exactly. Yeah, excellent. Um, okay, so Joe says he has an example course link with read speaker. Do you want the link? Um, well, I don't know whether we can send it to everybody at this point, but yeah, send it to me and I will. Uh, would, 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 um, and I don't know how we can well send it to me, and uh, I will respond respond to all, and that will way we, we, everyone be able to see it. So that'd be great. And a question for Jay or Tammy: Have you experienced any issues with screen re readers making students less likely to read? Um, well. Like I said, our experience with students who were using screen readers was very limited. Um, we do do a little work with the Atlanta School for the Blind, and they have put some students there. But um, generally, those students have somebody sitting with them, and, and they're pretty comfortable with that material. Um, we haven't put anything out that, that is read speaker enabled. Uh, yet, our first course is this, the orientation course, which will be available for students who who will start our material or our courses in January. Um, you know, I, I think that, that that's a, you know, going to be a personal preference. I think some students probably will listen instead of read. I think as a teacher, I, I look at that as a, a learning style. Um, Sometimes even I prefer to listen to material instead of reading it. Um, we deal mostly with 9-12 students, so we're feeling that the benefits are going to be uh, helping uh, slower readers, imp improving skill, existing skills, and those type of things. Um, so I don't really have any, any kind of data on whether students are opting not to read at all. As a matter of fact, we have a comment from Dale saying that he uses Read Speaker in the classroom environment because rather than making them read, they will be listening to the content on uh, on the whiteboard or screen, whatever they're using, and um, they get quiet and be more attentive. So, Great yeah, point. very cool. And I and I also like the fact that it is highlighting the text. So if you use it in that way, they're hearing it. They're reading along with it, and I think that's beneficial. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the dual combination of, of reading and highlighting 
in increases the student, uh, you know, um, understanding and 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 uh, memorization of of the content that's being played out. Yes, matter of fact, they all comments that it's better than Xanax. So. <laughs> Um, it apparently is very effective live in the classroom, and uh, as we said, this is this is being used by Georgia Virtual and by many SoftChalk clients in the online e-learning environment. So it is reasonably good, I think, to to note that both products are being used in the classroom as well. And having said that, I think we're about at the hour. So I'm going to close out, and um, there will be a couple of questions about licensing that we will answer privately, so that those continue to come in. And as you leave, you will get a survey, which will include a question about how well you think this presentation went, so we appreciate your feedback. And again, I am showing you the contact information for everyone. You will get an email tomorrow that has a link to the archive as well as this information about contact information. And actually, Maro Tim Lovelace's email will be the only one you'll see because Tim is the one who wants you to get back to him to talk about questions about uh, acquiring and using ReadSpeaker. So I want to thank everyone. Um, a special thanks to Jay and Tammy for an excellent presentation. I think you showed the world and open a lot of eyes on how both these products work together. So special thanks to you. Yeah, great, great, great uh, presentation, uh, uh, Jay and Tammy. And um, so with that, I want to thank everyone for coming. And um, again, this information will be available in an, on an archive very soon. So you can send it on to your uh, to your friends and colleagues.